So tides are caused by essentially two factors. Well, I mean, in the end, tides are caused by one factor, which is gravity. But really, there are two pieces of that gravitational interaction between moon and Earth that you have to consider. And a tide just means any gravity, any, um, you know, raising force from gravity. So not only does the water on Earth get pulled by the moon, but so does the whole Earth itself. And the difference is that the water is able to actually flow over the surface and therefore deform, whereas the rocky body of Earth, it can deform slightly, but not very much because it's stiff. So both of these forces are important when we think about what causes the tides. Um, so since the water can flow toward the surface, uh, we get one bulge that, is, that comes from that water being pulled slightly toward the moon. But you have to also consider the effect of the force on the earth from the moon. And so you also get a bulge on the far side of the moon. So if I have my earth and my moon, and then I imagine the water on the earth getting deformed towards the moon. Um, it would be sort of this egg shape if the moon didn't also pull on the earth. But then if my earth can be pulled slightly toward the moon, I don't know if it'll let me do that. Sure, there we go. Then we end up with two bulges. There are lots of explanations of the tides that are actually wrong on the internet, like a lot. So um, a lot of them talk about things like the angular momentum of the water. And you can, if you want to, get into a pretty deep rabbit hole about the true cause of the tides. But for our purposes, let it suffice to say that there are two bulges, one toward the moon and one away, that's caused by the differential pull of moon on water and moon on rock. The sun also pulls on the earth and on the water on the earth. And because of this, sometimes the tides from the sun and the moon add up, and sometimes they don't add up. So uh, based on this idea, right, the sun is always gonna be over here in our diagram. Which phase of the moon would you suppose is associated with the strongest tides? So I'm seeing mostly A, the new moon. And yes, so here, if we're the new moon, uh, is in this position, then the sun is raising the tide toward the moon, and the moon is also raising the tide in the same direction. So both of those tide raising forces add up together to produce what we call the spring tide. So this it doesn't happen in the spring. Um, I think your book mentions that it's called that because it's like the water springs up higher. So it doesn't actually occur necessarily in the spring, though it could. So those strong tides are called spring tides and they occur whenever the moon and the sun are in um, kind of in that line. So this can occur during the new moon, but also during the full moon. On the other hand, the neap tides would happen when the moon is 90 degrees away from the sun's position. So that's going to be the first quarter and the third quarter 